Hello everyone, welcome to episode 49 of this awesome, amazing Osu Let's Play series. In the last episode, we talked about the tag co-op mode, which is a multiplayer game mode, and I showed you guys how that works. And in this episode, I want to mostly talk about mindset, you know, the sort of mental side to Osu, and I guess what constitutes a good, healthy mindset when it comes to approaching something and getting better at something. So before we get into that, as usual, I would like to shout out that I live stream every single day over at twitch.tv. So that will be linked in the description. But if you want to hang out with me or watch me play this game live, ask me questions, anything like that, we'd be very, very happy if you stop by, say hello. And also bonus points, if you tell me that you came from this Let's Play series, then I will be very, very happy to see you there. So yes, please stop by, catch me live. I typically stream in the mornings in American time. So be sure to catch me then, but yes, without any further ado, first map. Oh, shoot, shoot, what did I just do? Okay, first map. So yeah, mostly uh, this is one of those episodes where I just kind of play random maps that I like and talk about this mental approach, um, mindset towards the game in general. And I want to start by talking about this idea of what's called fixed mindset versus growth mindset, because I think a lot of people sort of, they like lock themselves by potential or like they lock their potential based on like how far they think they can reach. Okay, actually, hmm. okay, so growth versus fixed mindset. And then I'll, I'll tell a little anecdotal story that sort of applies more, I guess, more of something from my own experience. But so fixed mindset basically is characterized by well, th there's a couple things. So, okay, wh where do I start? Basically, you view your potential as like, well, it, it's kind of in the name, but like sort of fixed. Like, uh, you sort of suspect. Okay, so so one common trait of having a fixed mindset is like ascribing uh, like character traits to yourself rather than like seeing things as like temporary like situations or like states of being like uh, a good example i think is if you are if you typically do poorly in like a math class or something and you think about it and you're like wow i am just bad at math like i'm i'm a person who is not good at math like i'm not a math person is is i think the right way to put it and on the other hand growth mindset is sort of approaching things with like sort of growth always being a possibility and you're like, oh, how can I improve at math from where I currently stand, basically? But um, yeah, I think another, I guess, more relevant example is like, you tend to feel like all your friends are better than you at like all the games that you play with them. And you uh, sort of view yourself as like, oh, I'm just bad at games. Like, it's, it's just kind of who I am. I, I'm just like, I'm always bad at games. I'm just the worst out of everyone in my friends. And that is also somewhat characteristic of fixed mindset. Um, another, I think, really, really big characteristic of not only fixed versus growth mindset, but just I think mindset in general is how you approach failure and like your mindset towards like what it sort of means to fail. I think very, very healthy mindsets view failure, I guess, as okay. Like okay, the, the most like ascended version of this is like you it's like failure doesn't actually exist because um what is seen as most people as failure is really just a learning experience right um i think one way that i uh, one wording that i think works really really well to explain this is that doing something right okay so yeah doing something right will teach you what solutions work and doing something wrong will teach you why solutions work and I think that sort of fundamental difference is what brings a lot of value to doing something wrong that you just don't get if you just do everything right the first time. So honestly, if you're trying to get better at something, the whole point of being like a beginner at something is that you suck at it. And the whole weight that you get better is by just being bad for long enough and frustrated enough to always be analyzing your whatever it is that you're doing, but in this case, let's just say Osu, like analyzing your gameplay. Obviously, you're going to be bad when you start. Everyone is bad when they start. That is literally what being a beginner means. So 
yeah, hopefully that sort of starting to make sense. So there's a lot of similar things when it comes to mindset and like what exactly is a good mindset to have when approaching, I guess, anything really. But oh, 10 star map, by the way, this map's awesome. I highly recommend you guys rate your maps when you, after you play them. 10 stars. Every map's a 10 star map. Unless it's not, but for the most part. <laughs> um, okay, next map. Okay, this is, this is a map from Shamrock's favorite maps. Shamrock is awesome. A uh, long-standing viewer of the series. Thank you for being so awesome. Uh, and you said that the hit sounds are very good in this map, so I'll make sure that they're on. Okay. So, a sort of anecdotal in, in my personal experience. So, for a long time, especially growing up, I would view... Oh, wow, wait. Hit sounds, let's go. <laughs> so... Whenever I saw someone doing something that like seemed sort of like out of reach or like above me, um, actually I don't know. It was really anything, but so many things that I was just like, "Oh, that's for like other people. Like that's that's not really a thing for me, if that makes sense." Um, and not because like I wasn't interested, but I was just like, "Oh, that's something that other people do, and like not me. Like I'm just not someone who like I, I don't know, like does that thing like." It could be anything, literally, it could be like... Okay, what's a good example? Like... Okay, just... Uh, hmm. First example that I think comes to mind that makes sense is like... A content creator, for example. Like, you see content creators and it's like, oh, that's just like something that other people do. Uh, like, it, it's not something that I do because... Or it, it's not something that I would do because it's like... It's an uh, it's a thing for other people, I guess, and I never really thought about it. Or like, um, like being a professional at something, I was just like, yeah, that's like not. I'm just like a little dude, I'm just kind of just like sitting here playing, like playing like Minecraft in in my room, and I was just like, yeah, I, does that kind of make sense? I have no idea. Uh, okay, hopefully that made sense to like at least one person. But over time, I sort of realized that like. This world is just full of normal people that just tried really hard and or got lucky. And that's sort of what brings them to some sort of spotlight or the position of spotlight. Um, but there is literally nothing special about any of those people. Um, like they're, they're not like above the law or like anything like that. Um, typically in, in society, pe people that are like more in the spotlight typically have... Um, oh, one third. <laughs> typically have a bigger say um, or like a stronger voice or like sometimes they they're like exceptions or like special treatment blah 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 there, there's a whole discussion about that but point is for the most part they are literally just normal people that do something that is like uncommonly okay it's like something that people want but don't know how to get I think that's a pretty good way to word it but yeah, I think like making that realization over the years, and honestly, I think it was really Osu that helped me come to those sorts of conclusions. Like, it's really not anything special, if that makes sense. Like, you, <laughs> how do I word this? I think like sort of getting wrapped into a lot of. So, okay, in my experience, I sort of got like wrapped into a lot of different tournaments, and I just kind of played them a lot. And then like over time, people would just like start recognizing my name. And I was like, wow, I don't feel like I did anything special, right? So I, my whole point with that regarding mindset is just like, just because you are like not in the position you want or like you think is ideal for you, like instantly or automatically, um, the whole point is that you like, you, you literally, you actually get there by, you know, doing whatever practice, getting better at something, like putting in the time and, and dedication hard work and discipline above all else but all right let's see this song might get the video demonetized but you know what that's fine finger okay i just said okay i was supposed to say i'm going to drink some water but then i ended up just saying okay <laughs> this is very strange okay so okay other things regarding mindset so I've had some discussions with other top players about like mindset, especially as it pertains to breaking barriers in this game. Um, 
like the PP record barrier, for example, as a, as a more extreme example, that like only a very select handful of players have ever like can say that they have like accomplished doing that, like breaking a PP barrier. And there's something called the banister effect, which is basically like if a what is it? If a barrier has never been broken before, then people basically have a mental block on it, saying that like it's not something that it's not something that people do. And it's, this is also something that's very common in speedruns, I think. Um, like pe people sort of put a mental block around like unbroken barriers, and just sort of see it as something that is like just not something that people have done, or like not something that is a thing that people can do because it has not been done before. Um, and I think the whole... Okay, so tying back to the idea of... Oh, nice miss. Sorry. <laughs> tying back to the idea of uh, just sort of ordinary people doing something that, like, people would want but, like, don't know how to get. I guess, th okay, th there's a bit more to it than that wording, but... Um... Oh, wait, hold on. Let me switch to the next map. But, okay, basically, just because a barrier is not broken doesn't mean that it can't be broken, but also, not only that, but it also doesn't mean that it can't be you that breaks that barrier if you just sort of give yourself the right conditions and, and I guess, work hard enough at it. And I guess another, like, healthy mental approach to barrier breaking as a whole is, like... Okay, so let's say there is an unbroken barrier, right? But, like, if you understand how the banister effect works, then, like, you know that, like, given three or four years of time, maybe, like, that barrier is going to be something that's, like, kind of insignificant to a lot of people. Um, like, those of you listening who are um, actually, like, relatively high rank, uh, like, let's say you have, like, uh, a couple, like one or two 600 PP scores. Like, there was a point in time where, like, 600 PP was the PP record. <laughs> like, literally nobody had ever gotten a 600 PP score before. Uh, or maybe 700 is another good example. And I think, like, ap applying that same effect to, like, today's standards, like, I think the current standards of um, a 1,000 PP score, for example, in this game, which obviously still, don't get me wrong, is, like, an insane score. But my point is that... You know, okay, I, I don't know. I think... Ho hopefully you guys sort of see what I'm talking about. So... And it can even relate to your own barriers like personal barriers like let's say you still have not gotten a 200 pp score before or something then uh, yeah, one thing i like to tell myself as a sort of like mental thing i guess is uh, like okay let's, let's say i'm trying to get an fc on this map and then every time i get to fc I'm like oh my god i'm so nervous i'm like shaking so much it would be such a good score for me blah 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 i'm like i usually only fc farm maps and this is such a crazy tech map right um but then, like, you look at the leaderboard, and it's like, these guys, like, all FC this map already. This, this guy literally assessed it. Like, are you kidding me? Like, this is unreal. And I guess just the whole mental side of it, like, just because it's not a barrier that you've broken, like, there's, like, many more barriers after you to break as well. And, like, in the grand scheme of things, it's not really something to get super worked up about. Obviously, it's okay to be proud of your achievements, but... Um... Yeah, that, I think that's actually a strategy that I've kind of used to, is it, I don't know, to like sort of calm my nerves, especially when I'm going for scores. It's it's either that or sometimes it's like, okay, so let's say there actually are no FCs on a map and you're, you're about to get the first FC or like first modded FC or something like that. Usually what I tell myself is like, like if I'm getting a score like that, it's like, oh, oh, <laughs> nice stack. Um... I'm just like, this map must be like easy and doable for a lot of players and they just haven't tried it. Like just no one, no one has tried it, but if other people were to try it, then they would probably be able to do even better than me. I, I guess this episode is sort of turning more into nerve control, but they, they are, okay, they're actually very, very related because, um, okay, another really, really powerful concept when it comes to mindset is basically like, Okay, your goal, I, I don't know the exact wording, but like, um, learning, like, okay, your goal being to learn versus your goal being for, like, results, um, like, I guess process-oriented versus goal-oriented? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the wording is. I, 
uh, probably should have thought about this and checked before I started recording, but uh, you know, it's fine. But yeah, basically like one, one approach to things, which is where you are like, you're fixated sort of on the result of what you're doing. And then the, um, like on, on the contrary, you also, so yeah. Or on the other hand, you, uh, how do I word this? You're focused more on like learning or like sort of growth as a whole rather than results. Like results, like, okay. So for, in the context of OC, for example, if you are playing a map with the intent of FCing the map, then if you're FCing towards the end, then obviously that's sort of like, you're about to reach your goal, right? And you might start getting nervous or like, if you miss, then like, you're going to fail basically. Um, but if you approach the game a little differently, which is that you are playing the maps just for the sake of learning the map, um, or just for the sake of growth and improvement. Like for every circle you press, you like get a little better at the game, basically, technically. Um, or like every time you play through an entire map, you get a little better. Then objectively speaking, actually, there's no difference between the first 100 combo and the last 100 combo when it comes to like if you're approaching the game for growth and improvement. So if if you're sort of like primary focus when you're playing this game or like practicing is just improvement and like learning, like let's say you're just trying to learn the map, for example, it literally doesn't matter if you miss or not. And that also removes a lot of pressure for you to hold your current score. Because if you happen to SS, then that's a cool side product, right? But the primary focus of what you're doing is actually just to learn the map, learn the patterns, and get better at the game as a whole. So there's a lot of little mental tricks like that. Also, I'm, I'm going to play hidden on this map because I do already have a hidden score. So I'm going to finish the entire map. Let's go, even if I miss. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I was <laughs> adjusting my volume. Um, but yeah, I think... OK, I, I feel like this would not be a complete mindset episode if I didn't approach the idea of genetics. I think a lot of people sort of use that excuse. And um, if you go through my channel, there's definitely a couple stream, like live stream clips, highlights of mine where I've talked about the whole genetics idea as well. I think genetics plays very closely into the role of um, fix, fix the mindset to some extent. Like you look at other people and you're like, oh, being good at Osu is just something that other people have the ability for because they, you know, clearly like, you know, one thing that I've talked about before is that you, hmm, how do I read this? When you discover like a new top player, or, like a player that like sort of just enters the spotlight as a top player, and they start setting all these crazy scores, you didn't see the process of like years of them like improving. Like you didn't know them when they were a bad player. You only knew them after they were already skilled at whatever they're doing. And with that in mind, it could be very easy to think like, oh, where did all that skill come from? Like you didn't you didn't see it get a, like you didn't see that player like improve or get better at what they're doing. So clearly it must have just appeared out of nowhere, thin air. So obviously genetics is the right answer. Um, like oftentimes you just don't see all the practice that and like hard work that goes into getting better at something. But in reality, like there's really no secret. Like people say, oh, you just need to like practice more, play more, work hard, things like that. And I think another like very common mindset thing, I guess, and I'll, I'll, I'll just end with this thought is that um, there a lot of people look for shortcuts when trying to get better at something that they're like, oh, there, there must be a faster way. There, there must be a way to like skip doing all the hard work. And obviously there are more optimized ways of improving at things. But I think at the end of the day, like th there's a reason why like no nothing beats hard work. And um, another, another thing that I've personally been telling myself, especially lately, is that like, what, what is it? Potential is not rewarded. Like potential is just straight up not rewarded. Um, the only time potential is rewarded is if you're getting like scouted out. Um, it's like, okay, like college applications is like the only example I can think of. Or like if you're getting scouted for like an esports organization or, or like some sort of organization like that. Uh, then it is very important to uh, like have a lot of potential and 
have other people see that potential in you. But at the end of the day, also, you people won't notice your potential unless you have something to like ca catch their attention. And that is where like it really is important to take to heart that like if you want to like I guess succeed at something or stand out at something, then like you might have the potential to be really, really good or like successful in like a certain avenue but just that potential is not going to like reward you with anything um another common example is like some people plan to okay so let, let's say you wanted to like make a video or something or like okay let, let's say you went on vacation and you recorded like all of your experiences and you plan on editing it into a, a vlog video uh summarizing your experience and then you record everything throughout the trip and then you get back home and just the fact that you have the footage now and that you have the potential to make that vlog whenever you get around to it, that is like enough of like a reward that you're like, okay, I don't have to, you know, like see this to completion basically. And hopefully that makes sense. Like that, like at the end of the day is like not rewarded. And I think like, I, I, I don't know who, who needs to hear this, but like having that sort of approach to things you do is like, not cool, not attractive. And I think really like putting in the hard work to finish what you've started and like really see things through and stuff like that is really, really important. But uh, yeah, with that, I think that is mostly all I wanted to cover. Just a couple, I think like either common like mindset things that I think should be talked about a bit more regarding OSU community as a whole. But also I think just like, I don't know, random thoughts related to mindset and, you know, drive in to some extent. And also some bangers, you know, this song is so good. Look at this guy, number one on the map. Let's go, Jordan. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching as usual. You guys are awesome. <laughs> if you have suggestions for future uh, topics for future episodes, please leave them in the comments because I do read all the comments on these episodes. And if you're watching in the future, please do check out my channel and watch my future videos because I do upload these every single day. And honestly, we're like almost at episode 50. I feel like I should also start saying to watch the previous episodes if you have not seen those either. But uh, yeah, check out my channel. That, that, is, that is what I'll say. I have a lot of videos on my channel. So um, yeah, that is just about going to do it though. Also check out my Twitch streams, please. I know you've probably heard me say that many, many times, but uh, I would be very happy if you guys stop by there if you have not before. But yes, with that, See you guys next time.